What is up guys? My name is Matt from Magic the Greatening and today I got a unfortunately not a budget deck tech for you. It's gonna be Blue Green Paradox Ramp. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's pretty much uh, it is a combo deck where um, you just get a whole bunch of floating mana in like one turn, and you play some Eldrazi Titans, and you win the game that way. Um, but before we get into it, go ahead and like the video if you uh, enjoy it. Uh, subscribe if you are new, and um, go ahead and click that I icon up in the right-hand corner and vote for the next deck tech. We are getting near the end of Amonkhet Standard, and we're going to be moving on to Hour of Devastation Standard. And let me tell you, I've already started playtesting some Hour of Devastation um, decks, and there's some pretty sweet ones. The Sphinx Tribal is very, very strong. I'm telling you guys right now. Um, I don't think I don't know if it's going to get competitive play, but it is very, very strong, and I hope a lot of people see how strong it can be because it it's very, very good. All right, let's get into it now. Uh, you guys know I like starting with the creatures, so let's do that. Um, let's just get the um, mana dorks out of the way here. We're going to play four copies of Druid of the Cowl, four copies of Naga Vitalist, two copies of Servant of the Conduit, and four copies of Weaver of Currents. Um... So Weaver of Currents and Naga Vitalis are probably the best um, ramp cards. Um, just because Weaver of Currents can tap for two colorless, which is very, very important. And Naga Vitalis can tap for any mana, or, or you know, green or blue. Um, Druid can only tap for green and Servant. You need energy to keep tapping. Um, so, that, I, it's not like we're trying to ramp into our Ulamogs and... And the other Eldrazi Titan, we'll get into it. But we want to have it where our Paradox Engine, we'll get there also in a moment, um, that we play a whole bunch of cheese spells. Let's say we have a, a few Weavers out, or you know, a Weaver, a Druid, and a Naga. You tap for four, you play something that costs two, you have two floating, and you just keep doing that until you can build up into a very, very large board that put two Eldrazi Titan out. Usually around turn 7 or 8 for you, if you're still alive. Um, we do have a problem against aggro, not gonna lie, but uh, we, we have some sideboard plans for that. Alright, so let's get into the other creatures, and they're gonna be the non-ramp creatures. We're gonna play two copies of Kozilek, the Great Distortion, two copies of the Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger, and two copies of World Breaker. Kozilek just fills our hand which is very good when you're trying to combo off because you're playing a whole bunch of cards. You need to draw, you know, draw back to seven, fill up your hand, and restart the combo. And Kozilek can help do that. Also, he's just a 12-12 with Menace um, that says, discard a card with converted mana cost X, counter target spell with converted mana cost X. That is very, very strong in this deck. Literally anything that costs um, two and above, you can counter. Um, just make sure you keep something that costs two or three or four um, so you can counter uh, things that can destroy your Ulamog, like Declaration of Stone, Anguish of Making, Cast Out, stuff like that. Um, Ulamog is a no doubter, uh, most expensive card in the deck by far. Um, yep, yeah, nothing really much more to say about Ulamog. And uh, World Breaker is also a very, very strong card because you can get rid of a pesky. Um, Artifact, Enchantment, or Land, or it can just be a good blocker that we can ramp into early. That's just 5-7 with Reach, um, which happens sometimes. Also, yeah, I mean, that that's basically it. Um, it's a good other hit, other than the two um, Eldrazi Titan we're playing. Um, outside of that, it's kind of in there just to um, keep on the pressure. All right, let's go to the Artifacts. We're going to play four copies of Hedron Archive and four copies of Paradox Engine. Paradox Engine is the reason to play the deck. You, it is not, it's honestly not that hard to play both Ulamog and Kozilek on the same turn. If not at all hard. Because if your opponent either doesn't run counter spells or doesn't run removal or just been ignoring your mana dorks, 
this can get out of hand really quickly, and you can see why. Um, you might be thinking, oh, you're not drawing enough cards to do that. Oh, we will. Don't worry about that. So, um, Paradox Engine with the decks both around, and Hedron Archive is just a better version of Weaver Occurrence, A, because it can't get re just removed by, like, creature removal, uh, and B, it can tap the turn it comes out, which is very, very nice, or when you already have a Paradox Engine out. All right, let's get on to the nine creature spells, the last eight spells in the main board. We're going to be playing four copies of Glimmer Genius and four copies of Pull from Tomorrow. This is what gets the deck going. And Pull from Tomorrow is huge for us. Even, even Glimmer is huge. Because once you start, once you have a Paradox Engine, you have a few things out. The moment your opponent leaves you with three plus mana dorks, including, an Hedron, including a Hedron Archive and a Paradox Engine, and passes the turn to you, and you have something like a Glimmer or Pull from Tomorrow in your hand, preferably a Glimmer in that situation, you really start going off. And you can see your, you can look at your hand and say, there's nothing here. There's nothing here, but all it really takes is you glimmer it into something good, you play it, maybe you sack the Hedron of our guy, draw into something good, play a pull from tomorrow, draw, you know, seven-ish cards, and you just go from there. And the good thing about this deck, and what keeps it going, is we're not just playing a whole bunch of huge, you know, huge things. Glimmer Genius only costs four mana, um, which isn't very, very hard for us to create with our mana dorks. Um... We have a whole bunch of other mana dorks you can play. So let's say you tap, you know, four mana with your, um, or six mana with your dorks. And you play another one, you get four floating, and then you untap all your stuff. Like, that's just a straight-up good play. That's how you ramp, and that's that's how you're ramping, is by playing those uh, other um, dork spell, mana dork spells to untap your <laughs> mana dorks so you can get a whole bunch of floating, so you can play your Kozilex and your Ulamogs. Alright, to the land, and I know this is already a competitive deck tech, um, but we're only going to be playing four Lumbering Falls, ten Forts, and ten Island. Ten island. Um, I just playtested like this and did fine. Speaking of playtesting, um, my blue-green Paradox Engine went four and two, which is a lot better than I thought it would. Um, one and zero oh against Black White Aristocrats. One and zero oh against Blue Red Control. Yeah, um, 1-0 against Mono Blue Improvise, 0-1 against Green, Black, Red, Recursion, I, it was kind of, it just played a whole bunch of things, a whole bunch of things that can come back from the grave, um, and then 1-1 against Mono Red Aggro, that totals up for a record of 4-2, um, the Mono Red Aggro, um, was our biggest problem. To be honest, not the not the recursion deck because I didn't have it. You know, once <laughs> once our devastation comes in, no one's gonna be playing graveyard stuff because you could just play the desert land that exiles things from graveyards and they're screwed. So not too worried about that. But we I had to change the sideboard a little bit because um, of the aggro deck because it did just hand me my butt in the first game and I was able to win this or the second match. I lost. I got swept in the first match and the second match. I won in three games, so um, let's get to the sideboard now. All right, so the sideboard consists of four separate cards. Two of them are against aggro. Two of them are eight of the cards. Over half the sideboard is just against aggro. We're going to be playing in the sideboard uh, four commencement of festivities, um, four haze of pollen, three dust centers, deliverance, and four negates. Um, Dissenter's Deliverance can just take out annoying artifacts for us, um, and then the eight, um, fogs we're playing in the sideboard is very, very good. It's honestly, like, really, really strong, too, because you will definitely have a whole bunch of leftover mana when you finish the great, great combo, and you're, you're bound to have one of these in your hand, um, the reason I'm playing 8 is A, I want to have them consistently because aggro runs us over really quickly, buy us a whole, whole, you know, make sure we can buy ourselves another turn, not just put 2 or 3 and just put a whole bunch in. Um, and the difference between the two is Haze of Pollen prevents all combat damage. Alright, and it can cycle, so it's in there for that. Commencement of Festivity says prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to players this turn. So let's say you have a World Breaker out. Or you have a cause like, and they think they could just squeeze in the last bit of damage. 
you play commensurate with festivities, your blocker will be able to kill one of their attackers, and, and then you just prevent the combat damage that we don't to you. So they each have served their purpose. They're both very, very good. They both protect our life, which we desperately need in a deck like this that really just is trying to build its uh, combo within, you know, the first four or five turns. So um, those are very, very, very useful when you can get them. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you liked this video, please hit that like button. It means a lot. Subscribe if you are new. And just like I said in the beginning of the video, vote for the next video's deck tech, or my next deck tech video's deck tech, if that makes any sense. I'm saying deck tech a lot. Um, go ahead and vote in the upper right-hand corner, and hopefully I will see you in the next deck tech. Peace.